Rupam tasya grajamuri purim maturim kushtvartim Radhakunda madhivaram ahuradika omadvas Pratu yasa patita kripaya sri guru tannatusmi Guravei gaura chandraya Radhikai Tadali Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Ananda Lila Maya Vigrahaya Prima Badavit Chavi Sundaraya Tasmai Maha Prima Rasapradaya Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Bhaktya Bhinna Aparada Lakshay Chilta Shrika Marita Ram Kamali Kripa Mahita Shalam Prapala First of all, I have my suspended and my puspanjali. My heart like flowers thousands and thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Guru Dev. Asmadiya Parmarada Tama Guru Pada Padma Nitrila Parvisht Om Vishnu Pada Ashtotra Satasvi Rupa Nugacharya Varya Sil Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Secondly, after my pranams thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Parama Guru Dev to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupa Nuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara And finally, after my pranam to Sri Srimati Shamarani Didi Mahabudi Prabhu and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis on Chakrapadu Sankapas and the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavad Gita So we, for two days now, the third day, we have been hearing the wonderful glories of transcendental personality associate of Supreme Lord Sri Sachinandan Gohari and Radha and Krishna. How our Gurudev, who very mercifully appeared into this world, sent by Radhika herself to bring us to her lotus feet. One very essential Important teaching that Srila Gurudev often would say is don't criticize anyone. This is so important. Why? Because 
तारा मध्ये सर्वश्रेष्ठ नाम संकीर्तन निरापलाद नाम लयले भाई प्रेम धान ओल्ड एंगस ऑफ भक्ति द बेस्ट इज हरि नाम संकीर्तन इफ अ पर्सन हु सिंपली अट द होली नेम्स ऑफ श्री कृष्ण निरापलाद विदाउट एनी ऑफेंस देन भाई प्रेम धान दे विल अटेन कृष्ण प्रेम सिल ईश्वर पुरी पाद टोल्ड श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु कृष्ण नाम महामंत्र ए तो स्वभाव जे जापे तारी कृष्ण उप उपजय भाव व्हेन महाप्रभु रिसीव्ड इनिशिएशन ही वेंट एंड ही बिगन टू चैंट एंड एज ही वाज चैंटिंग ही हैड द दर्शन ऑफ श्री कृष्ण एंड ही बिकेम मैड ही वाज वीपिंग रोलिंग ऑन द ग्राउंड सो ही वेंट बैक टू हिज गुरु देव एंड सेड की ब मंत्र दिले गो साय की ब तरबा जब इते जब इते मंत्र करले पगा ओ गुरु दे व्हाट काइंड ऑफ मंत्र यू हैव यू गिवन मी व्हाट काइंड ऑफ पावर इज इन इट दैट आई बिगन टू चैट जब नाउ आई थिंक आई हैव बिकम मैड सो इन रिप्लाई हिज गुरु दे सेड ओ कृष्ण नाम महामंत्र ए तो स्वभाव दिस इज द नेचर ऑफ द हरि कृष्ण महामंत्र जे जब पे Tare Krishna Upajay Bhav. If someone would do japa, repeating the holy names of Sri Krishna, then Bhav, ecstatic love will manifest in their heart. So, this question comes: If we are chanting, and realization is not coming, then what is the cause? Tabe jani aparade tahe te prachur Krishna ma bija tahe na kare ankur. Krishna nam a beach the holy name of krishna is like a seed and it becomes ankurit it sprouts that means from the name of krishna the beautiful form of krishna manifests and from the form of krishna then see krishna's qualities his associates and one form among those associates that will be your swarup so nam reveals your swarup also अथासी कृष्णनामादी नाभवत ग्रयम इंद्रयै सेवन मुखी जीवादो स्वयमेव स्पुरत्तदा कमेंटिंग ऑन दिस वर्स सिल बप्तिस्ना सुताकुर ही यूज्ड दिस वर्स टू एक्सप्लेन सेव साधक रूपेण सिद्ध रूपेण चात्रहि हाउ शुड वन सर्व इन हिज साधक फॉर्म एंड इन सिद्ध फॉर्म सी सेड फर्स्ट इन द साधक फॉर्म चैट द होली नेम्स ऑफ कृष्ण सेवन मुखी जीवादो स्वयमेव स्पुरत्तदा बाय चैंटिंग विदाउट ऑफेंस Krishna's name, form, qualities, associates, and your swarup, and then you can follow those associates, and then lila like this. So this is how the swarup comes. Sri Guru, when the devotee is chanting Hari Nam, by his mercy, he reveals the swarup in the heart of the disciple. After that, he, the disciple may reveal his heart to the Guru, and Guru can give some upasaka priskriti. That means some refinement. of that realization otherwise the swarup siddhaya these ekadas bhavs they cannot be given they cannot be given to anyone but rather those who are chanting purely they can realize it and sri guru can give some refinement some finishing touches uh, to that that is called upasaka priskriti the um, refinement of the experience or conception of the worshipper of krishna so this is the power of the holy name and tabe jane aparade toite prachur if the seed of nam prabhu is not manifesting it's not becoming ankurit in our heart then the result is aparade toite prachur many many offenses are there and among the 10 offenses to the holy name eh, it's very interesting you know Have you ever seen the um, the race hurdles race? When there's a race with the hurdles, they have to run and they have to jump over a hurdle, and they have to run and they have to jump over another hurdle like that, like this. So in between you and Krishna praying, there are ten hurdles. All you, have, you just have to avoid these. What are these ten hurdles? Ten offenses to the holy name. If a person will avoid the ten offenses. Then they will arrive at their destination, Krishna praying very easily. But the problem is, generally we see that in this Kali Yuga, where it's very contaminated atmosphere, 
Yeah? And there's so much envy everywhere, saturating and permeating the atmosphere, that mainly we see that a lot of devotees, they fall flat on their face at the first hurdle. Yeah? Why? Because the first offense to the holy name, satam ninda nam nam paramam maparadam vitanate yatakya tenyatam katam usate tatvigaram. To criticize the devotees who have dedicated their life to uh, preaching the glories of the holy name. This is the problem. So Srila Gurudev said, don't criticize anyone. Kahari na ninda kari Krishna Krishna boli ajay chaitanya say jini bakahali. In Chaitanya Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Bhagavati, he said, chant the holy names continuously and don't criticize anyone. And if you do this, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Ajit, he is unconquerable by anyone. He becomes conquered and he gives himself. Mahaprabhu gives himself to that person who chants the holy name and never criticizes anyone. So, Nindukan nahi kalabya sava shastra gai. Sabra Saman Bhagavat Dharma Hai. The critical person, he never uh, attains anything of value. Ninduka Nahi Kalabhyo. Sarada Chastaka, all the scriptures say this. In fact, Sabra Saman Bhagavat Dharma Hai. The Bhagavat Dharma is the Dharma of Sabra Saman, giving respect to everyone, mm -hmm. respecting all. So, in this material world, it's very popular. Ninda rasa sadhapi bet. May I always relish the rasa of criticism. But this is very, very unhealthy for our spiritual life. Now, Dosri Guru, he speaks. Don't criticize. Yes, Guru Dev, yes, Guru. I've got it, I've got it. But, but there's some justification. In this way, we don't accept the instruction of Sri Guru. Don't say any ifs or buts. Truth should be spoken. Always truth should be spoken. But what is truth? See, Krishna said in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, truth is that which is pleasing to the ears of sadhus. And sadhus, they never want to hear the criticism of others. Perhaps you have heard of Srila Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. Vaishnavera nindakama nahi parikani sabi krishna bhagun kari e matrajani it is said that Srila Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, if someone would come and begin to criticize, say some faults of a devotee, not to, something untrue, even true, saying something even true, Vaishnavera Ninda Karma, that means some activity which is not uh, good of a devotee, then Nahi Padikani, he, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, never used to allow it to enter into his ears. Hmm? But rather he would say, Sabi Krishna Bhajan Kari E Matta Jani. Everyone is doing Bhajan. Except for me. I am the only one who is not doing Bhajan. So Prabhupada Srila Bhaktisthan Sutakuri said, he used to say, your critical mentality, it's alright, but if you turn it on yourself, don't become involved in the activities and the qualities of others. Try to criticize ourselves and then we can make some uh, progress. So Sri Krishna said to Uddhav, Parasu bhava kamani na prasamsati nindati sahasu prapyate swatad asatya vinivesata. One should not speak of the good qualities or the bad qualities. One should not praise or blame anyone. Why? Because if you praise or blame any other person, now you lose. Sahasu brasyate swatad. We immediately fall down from our own swarta. Swarta means our own purpose. Where are we going in life? What is our goal? Our goal is Krishna praying. How does a singing, doing dosha kirtan, speaking the faults of others, help us attain Krishna praying? Hmm? Hmm? Only because the heart is dissatisfied, we point out the fault of others. It's really only a self-advertisement. Look at me, I don't have this fault. It is a glorif the criticism of others is a glorification of one's own ego only and seeking comfort in the self-aggrandizement. So, Sa'asu Brasite Swartad, those who criticize, praise and blame the good and bad qualities of others, they lose, they fall from the path of their own benefit. Why? Asakta Because whatever you speak, you become absorbed in that. 
Because in order to work for words to come out from your mouth, they have to go first. The vibration of pran goes from when you speak. The speech speech begins in the muladha chakra, and it goes through the mental and intellectual phase, and then comes out of the mouth. So to speak something, whatever you are thinking of, it has already taken control of your manobriti, your chitta brittis internally. Whatever you speak, it absorbs your mind. So if a person is speaking the faults of others, that means their mind is absorbed in the faults. But these faults, asatta bhinivesata, they are the qualities of maya. Hmm? The faults of others, they are the qualities of tamagun, the qualities of rajagun. So now our mind is absorbed in rajagun and absorbed in tamagun. So then we have lost our uh, progress and towards our goal of life. So, Sila Prabhupada, Sila Bhaktisthan Sutako used to say, Agyahi Doshi. Hmm? Doshi means the culprit. Hmm? In this world we see so many problems. Yesterday we were hearing from Srimati Shamarani Didi, and she was saying how Bhakti Nautako has prayed, Atmani Vedana tu apode kori hoinu parapasuki dukha durei galo chintana rohilo chaudike ananda deke. Oh my Lord, Oh, oh Gurudev, since that moment I surrendered to you, all my worries have gone far away and I see joy in all directions. So, if a person is not surrendered, then they will think, they will always think, there are many, many problems. The truth of the matter is that Sri Krishna is Supreme Lord. Suridam Sarabhutanam, he is the best friend of everyone. He is the Parameshwara. He is the controller of everything. So nothing bad ever happened in the past, in the present, or the future. And so if our mind is absorbed in this, now we have gone in Maya. And those who are surrendered, they are not concerned with these things. They are joyful and absorbed in Seva to their Prampara. They are always looking up, looking up towards Gurudev, Param Gurudev, Paramesti Gurudev, Parapara Gurudev, Sikhsko Swami, Sachinandan Gohari. So, but if a person is not surrendered, then they see the world is full of problems everywhere. Also, Rasika yesterday, I was very inspired by all that yesterday. Uh, oh, Tulsi, Tulsi yesterday, she was quoting the verse, Tattenu kampam su sumekshamano. What does the verse mean? It means that person who sees mercy everywhere. He sees the Lord's mercy everywhere. Once there was one wealthy person and his son was very sick and he was about to die. And Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Thakur, he went to see him and he said, You are a sadhu. Please bless me that my son will, uh, will live. Hmm? Srila Bhaktisthan Thakur said, mm, I can help you. I will not change the destiny of this child that the child should live, but I'll help you see it in the proper way. He said, no, no, you're a sadhu, you should stop my son from dying. Then Srila Bhaktisthan Sotako became very firm and he said, I will not engage in a campaign to obstruct the will of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Huh? This, you see the difference between the vision of the pure devotee and the vision of the materialist. The materialist sees problems everywhere and he's trying to fix them. And the pure devotee sees Krishna's mercy is everywhere. And he's appreciating it and he's very grateful for that. That is, Tatenu Kampam Susumik Shamanu. Hmm? So Prabhupada Bhakti Sanzo said that I'm not going to engage in a campaign against to impede the, the will of the Supreme Lord. If it's the will of the Supreme Lord that he, the soul should leave, he should leave. And that's mercy on all of us to help us become detached. We are averse to see Krishna and we are very attached to this world. So Supreme Lord see Krishna is so merciful that he is... You know, when there's a festival then everywhere is decorated with beautiful garlands. So Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sotakwa said, The Supreme Lord is so kind and so merciful that he has decorated the whole universe with beautiful garlands of problems. <laughs> to help us become detached. and turn away from the, our material attachments and be dedicated to his lotus feet. So the mentality of the pure devotee and the conditioned soul is completely different. 
So the conditioned soul is always looking for a culprit. Who is to blame? Who, to whom can I point the finger? So, Prabhupada Baptista Sotagur said, Adyahi Doshi. Doshi, who is the culprit? The culprit is Adya. Avidya, ignorance. If someone is against you, if someone is speaking some apasiddhanta, if even someone is making some problem, then one should not become angry with them. But rather, one should say, Agya hi doshi. The culprit is the avidya, the ignorance. Hate the sin, but not the sinner. In this way, the devotee's heart is always peaceful, very, he's very kind and helpful to everyone without becoming angry. Akroda Paramananda Nityananda Rai. See, Guru is a manifestation of Nityananda Bhu. So it is said that Nityananda Rai is Akroda Paramananda. Full of bliss and he never becomes angry with anyone. If a pure Vaishnava will show some angry, then you should know that this is also only Kripa to purify us. So Agyahi Doshi. It is how to behave when there's a problem, when there's a difficulty, when there's a scandal. Then I saw when I was staying very close to my Gurudev, sometimes once there was a big scandal, a big problem, and everyone becomes running around excited and sensationalism here and there, and devotees began to criticize also different people. And Gurudev was very calm and peaceful. And then he said to me, you should see the situation in this way. Swapada mulam bhajata priyasya chaktanya bhavas hari parisya vikarama yascho patitam katanchit dunoti sarvam ridisani vistaha. If there's a devotee and they are um, dedicated in the service to the Supreme Lord, but somehow or other, some vikarama, some fault comes in them. Then for a devotee, they have no need to do any karmakanda, any prayasthita, Vedic atonement or anything. But rather you should think, Sadunoti sarvam ridisani vistaha. In the heart, Krishna is there. And see, Krishna, because he's very kind to his devotees, he will clean everything away and make everything pure. So have faith in that. So... I know, I can say from my own experience that in such a situation I would not know how to behave or how to see the situation. But by being with Gurudev and directly he's looking in my eyes and pointing at me and saying this verse and planting this verse in my heart, then the wisdom comes. Actually in our conditioned state we don't know what is good for us and what is bad for us, what is beneficial and detrimental. This is Sanat Goswami's first statement to Mahaprabhu. Apanara hita hita kichu in ajani, gramya vyavahara panditai satyamani. Oh my Lord, I don't know what is beneficial for me and what is detrimental for me. But in the marketplace, the common people, they all call me a pandit and I'm so foolish I believe in them. So, giving up our own false ego, giving up our own idea of what is right and wrong and how to behave, how to think, how to respond to various situations, we have to be in anugatya, anugatya, under the guidance of pure Vaishnavas and learn from them how to walk this path of pure bhakti. And in this way, one can cross over the first hurdle to attain Krishna Prem, that is Satam Ninda, never criticize any devotee, that offense will not be there, and then you, there's only nine other offenses we have to give up, and then uh, the heart will become flooded with Krishna Prem. Now, one more uh, topic I wanted to speak about this morning, about important teachings of Srila Gurudev. And it's very, it's very deep, very, very deep. Sometimes Srila Gurudev used to say, when I do archan, it's bhajan. And when you do bhajan, it's archan. What does it mean? What does it mean? So, it's very profound. It means that 
In our devotional life, we're using so many words. We use words like a guru, a disciple, a bhakti, sharnagati, shavanam, kirtanam, smaranam, padasevanam, and there's a vocabulary that we use. But all the vocabulary that we use, it can be understood in different ways. There is, in Sanskrit, words have mukya vritti and gona vritti, the direct meanings and the secondary meanings. For example, if you say Gangayam Goshaha, it means the village on the Ganges. So the direct meaning, the Mukya Vritti, is village on the Ganges. But is it possible to build a village on the Ganges? No. So in this case, you cannot take the Mukya Vritti, the direct meaning. So Gangayam Gosha, you have to go to the Gona, Gona Vritti, secondary meaning, that is called Lakshna Vritti, associated meaning. So Gangayam Gosha, the village on the Ganges, actually means the village on the bank of the Ganges. Otherwise, there's another type of vritti, it's called Vyanjan vritti. Vyanjan vritti means the uh, suggested meaning. So if someone says, oh, how can I go to your house? I want to visit you. How can I go to your house? Then you say, Gangayam Goshaha, my village is on the Ganges. So then here, the Vyanjan vritti, or the suggested meaning is, you can visit me by boat. Take a boat and come because my village is on the Ganga, like this. So there are different ways in which the words can be interpreted directly, indirectly, and by, by associative meaning, Lakshan Vritti and Vyanjan Vritti, by suggestion. Now the direct meanings, they also have two parts. That is called Rudhi Vritti and Yoga Vritti. So Rudhi means the conventional meaning of the word. What does it mean? Conventionally, among common usage of the people. And Yoga Vritti means the etymological meaning. What's the meaning of the word according to, if you break it down, what are the parts that compose it? For example, if you say the word Pankaj, what does Pankaj mean? Hmm? What does Pankaj mean? Hmm? Lotus. lotus, yes. Thank you, Shamarani. So Pankaj means lotus. But neither the word pank, the Panka or Ja refers to lotus. Pank means mud. And Ja means born. You see? So Pankaj by Rudi Britti, by, uh, that is by conventional usage, it means lotus. But Pankaj by Yoga Britti, by etymology, it means born from the mud. So many things grow in mud. There are so many different plants and things that can grow in the mud. But in Rudi Britti, in the conventional usage, when we say Pankaj, we don't mean any of those things, we just mean one thing. We mean lotus. So now you understand what it means, Rudi Britti conventional meaning. Srila Bhaktisthan Sotakwa explained, this Brudi Briti also has three divisions. That is called Vidvat Rudi, Sadaran Rudi, and Agya Rudi. So Vidvat Rudi meaning, Vidvat Rudi means, what does this word mean to a Vidvan, Vid, Vidvat Anubhav? That is the person who is enlightened, whose heart is impure, what is their realization of the meaning of this word? So that is called Vidvat Rudi. Then there is Sadaran Rudi, that is a person, they may be a, a Brahmin, they may be in the mode of goodness, and they take the meaning of the word according to the dictionary. But then there are persons in Tamas and Rajas whose consciousness is more contracted, and they have a more limited understanding, only related to the physical uh, experiences of the gross world. So these are three types of three types of Briti. So Gurudev, he used to speak about Vidva Drudi Diksha. Once he said to me, it looks like I am giving Diksha to hundreds of people, but actually I have given Diksha to only two or three. Because Diksha in Vidvat Rudi means Karna Bhed Sanskar. Karna Bhed Sanskar. In, in your life, there are so many uh, Sanskars which are performed, ten. From Garbadan Sanskar before you are born, and then you are born, and there's a Jat Karma and Nam Karan Sanskar. 
cutting the umbilical cord, giving the holy name, first grains, writing the first letter, being married and so on. And then there's a sanskar also after you die, after you pass away, performed by the, uh, your descendants. So these are sanskar. So one of the sanskar is called karna bed sanskar. It means ear piercing. So diksha, the word diksha according to Vidvat Riti, Riti is a karna bed sanskar. It is a piercing of the material covering of the ear. Now the soul is covered by the material sense of hearing. But when the disciple surrenders, surrenders completely at the lotus feet of Sri Guru, when there is only the pranipat vritti and the mm, pariprashna vritti and seva vritti in his consciousness, surrender, inquiry and service, then when Sri Guru speaks the Shabda Brahma transcendental sound, it pierces the material covering of the ear and then enters into the Vidakash, the sky of the heart. When that sound enters into the sky of the heart, the, there are two types of space. There is a material space, which is the Paritz Chinna. It is Kanda. It is divided by time, place and circumstances, by past, present and future. And then there is the Chidakas, the spiritual space. If there are some words which are spoken in material space, then these words indicate something. They indicate something. So the word is one thing and what they indicate is something else. But when the Shabda Brahma, the Vedic sound, pierces the ear of the disciple, then this sound and the object, that, that space is not Parishchina, it's undivided. So when that sound goes into the Chidakas, the spiritual sky of the heart of the devotee, the sound and the object is exactly the same thing. They are not two things. So this is the meaning. Yasya Devi Prabhakti Yatha Deve Tathagaro Tasyaiti Katita Hyata Prakashante Mahatmana To that person who is, as he is dedicated to Krishna, has Parabhakti to Krishna, similarly has Shuddha Bhakti to Sri Gurudev, then Tasyaiti Katita Artha Katita means spoken, and Arta means the object. That which is spoken, the very object to which it's referring. No, it's not referring. The sound and the object is the same thing. And when Sri Guru speaks, then that object, Prakashanti Mahatmana, it immediately appears within the heart of the disciple. So this is stated in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam. Sadyo rudhyavarude teyatrakitibhi susru subhistachanat. Sadyo. Immediately when the disciple listens to the Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna becomes captured in his heart. In the third canto it is said, Yatteto diya charnam bujakosha gandam jigranti kana vivarai sutivata nitam bhaktya grihita charna parayacha tesham naipa Oh my Lord, your pure devotees, they smell the fragrance of your lotus feet through the ears. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. Jigranti. Jigranti means they smell. Karna Bivarai, through the holes of the ears. Sruti Varta Nitam, by listening to the, the air, the air of the Vedic sound enters into their ear and they have darshna of Sri Krishna's lotus feet and they smell the fragrance of his lotus feet through the ear. So this is this is Vidvat Rudi Briti. This is the Vidvat Rudi. Hmm? So this Vidvat Rudi has been described by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Shikshastakam. Vidya Vadhu Jivanam. This Sankirtan is the life and soul of transcendental knowledge. Mahabuddhi Prabhu was asking me, Someone is learning something. Well, isn't that, can it be just like Gyan? Maybe it's just Gyan. And we should not be uh, involved in that. But actually, anything, yeah. any, if someone is listening, and that sound is not manifesting there and then, in that moment within the heart, then it's not, any, it's not anything. Srila Gurudev used to say, Srila Gurudev used to say, theoretical knowledge is no knowledge. Is that right, Shamarindri? Theoretical knowledge is no knowledge. Actual knowledge is darshan. So, there are three stages in bhakti. Sambandha gyan, abhideya and prayojan. So, Sambandha, abhideya and prayojan, all three of them, they are all darshan. 
The Sambandha Gyan is not a theoretical knowledge of different categories of Jiva Tattva and this Tattva and that Tattva. The Sambandha Gyan is Darshan, it is a vision. And then on the basis of that vision, one internally serves, and that is the Abhideya, and that is Darshan, and the Prayojan is also Darshan. So from beginning to end, everything is Darshan. And if there's no Darshan, then there's no Bhajan. And one is doing what? Archan. Is, yeah, understand? So we can give some example of, yes, so there's no problem. We can give some example of Vidvatrudi, Vritti. We are all reading Shastra, hearing and speaking. But it may be that everyone is not hearing and speaking and understanding according to Vidvatrudi. For example, in Bhaktira Samhita Sindhu, there, Srila Rupa Goswami part, he said, Baram huta bara jwala panjaranta vyavastitaha nash chinta shtori vimoka janasam vaisa vaisasam. The meaning is, I would rather be inside an iron cage surrounded by fire than to have the association of persons who are averse to remembering Krishna. Right? So this is a verse, it's glorifying uh, by indirectly glorifying Sadhu Sangha, by criticizing the Asat Sangha. Hmm? Asat Sangha. So I would rather be in a cage of uh, iron and lowered into a blazing fire than to have the Asat Sangha of those persons who are not doing the chinta, remembrance of, of Sri Krishna. Huh? Did everyone understand? Yeah. How did you understand? By Vipat Rudibriti? By Sadhana and Rudibriti, by Agya Rudibriti. You think about it. So the explanation is this. Prabhupada Bhakti Sansotako, he said that it means I would rather be in the cage of iron and surrounded by fire than have the association of that person who takes his japa mala in his hand like a person takes the reins of a horse. What does that mean? When you get on a horse and you take the reins, now you're the driver, you're in control. Like this. So if someone's taking the mala, say, okay, now I'm going to do bhajan, here we go, let's do the bhajan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Eh? All katrita abhiman, all coming from the false ego, all initiated from this uh, worldly platform, without any surrender, with bodily identification, with mental identification. Hmm? So this is not bhajan. Hmm? So, then he said, I would rather be in a cage, in an iron cage surrounded by fire than associate with the person who takes his mother like a person holding the reins of the horse or that person who does not in every syllable of the name relish the sweetness of Sri Krishna's swarup. If a person is not relishing the sweetness of Sri Krishna Swarup in every syllable. This is Asat Sangha. And it's better to be in the iron cage surrounded by fire. This is the Vidvat Rudi meaning of the verse. Why? Because we use these words, Sravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam. But what do they actually mean? The word Sravanam means that when we hear, then we see the lotus feet of Krishna and smell the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet. That is Sravana. Kirtana means Vidya Vadhu Jivanam, the life and soul of all transcendental knowledge. When the holy name is chanted, Krishna's form, qualities, associates and pastimes are appearing. That is Kirtan. What is Smaran? Smaran is not, someone thinks I am doing Lila Smaran, remembering Lila. But, in the sixth, the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Narad Muni, he tells Yudhisthira Maharaj that Namana Spishtamahati, the mind cannot remember anything that you have not experienced before. Hmm? Then what are you remembering? If you haven't ex that's what memory is. Memory means to take a samskar of a past experience and bring it into the forefront of your mind. Hmm? So if you say, I'm, do I'm remembering Krishna's pastimes, if you have not seen the pastimes, then how will you remember them? Once someone mm, came to Gurudev asking about this subject, Gurudev said, Oh, can you meditate on my father? He said, I've never seen your father. 
So then if you've never seen him, how will you meditate on So he said the same thing is there with Krishna. So begin with the name. And if you chant the holy name without offense, Krishna will reveal his form and then you can remember him. You cannot remember anything that you haven't the, experienced. So the, uh, this man depends on anubhuti. And it depends on realization. Otherwise one is remembering words. One is remembering some words, what you have read in a book or something that you have heard, remembering those words, but not the actual pastime. So Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sutako said, Leela Vaite Nama Spurti Rupanuga Bale Na. A Rupanuga Vaishnava will never say that there will be a Spurti of the Holy Name from the Leela. If you start from the Leela, the name, you will not have a Spurti of Nam. Start from the Nam, Nam will give Spurti, Rup, Gun, Parika, and then Leela, like this, not backwards. So, when the devotee is in the Prakrit stage, that is the Kanishta Adhikari stage, Archayam Evaharaye Puja Yasada Eyate Natad Bhakteshu Chanyaitsu Sabhakta Prakrita Asmitaha. It is said that the Prakrita Bhakta, the materialistic Bhakta, the Kanishta Adhikari, they have a faith in Archan. They like to do archan. Now someone may say, well I'm not really interested so much in serving the deities, I'm more into chanting and harikata, like this. But this, this is not a choice. When the devotee is in the Prakrit stage, even his hearing, chanting and remembering is not actually those angers of bhakti, by bhivat riti briti. He's using the words, I am hearing, I am chanting, I am remembering. But not by bhivat riti briti, by sadharan riti briti, by Adhyavati Briti, and in that stage, his hearing, chanting, remembering is not actually those angas of Bhakti, it is in the stage of Archan, all included in Archan. And this is what Srila Gurudev meant when he said, when I do Archan, it's Bhajan. Why? Because even if it looks like he's serving a deity, but actually he's, at, he's having Darshan of Krishna, and in his eternal spiritual Manjari Swarup, he's serving Radha and Krishna. He said, but when you're doing Bhajan, you're doing Archan. That means that if the devotee is not experiencing the spot dharma, the manifestation of Nam Prabhu, then even though they think, I am chanting, I am hearing, I am remembering, but they are not doing those things, they are doing the, those things, yes, but within the category of Archan, not the actual Sankirtan dharma that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give. So in the beginning, a person, they have to, they have no choice from Sada, Ato Sada, Ata Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anatha Nivriti, like this through these stages, only faith is gradually, gradually becoming firm. Gradually, gradually the surrender is increasing, increasing. And then when Nishta comes, heart becomes very, the Chitta becomes steady. Then when the Chitta is Nirmal, steady, it develops the quality called the Bhagavat Bimba Grahitva, the power to catch the reflection of the form of Sri Krishna. So Chaito Dharpana Marjanam. Heart should be steady and some realization will begin in Nishta and then in Ruchi the actual nature of pure bhakti manifests. In Ruchi devotee begins to see Krishna's form and his beautiful qualities and his associates and his sweetness and then he understands bhakti tattva, not before that. So in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami said, Swapal pi Ruchi eva syad bhakti tattva avabodhikaha. This bhakti tattva is understood only by those who have attained ruchi. Even it's a little ruchi, but they've entered into that stage. Beyond nishta, they know bhakti tattva, and others don't know. They try to understand by kevala yukti. So yukti means logic, reason, inference, tarka, and kevala, generally it's translated as dry. Dry logic and reason. So someone say, I'm not using dry, dry logic and reason, I'm reading the Shastra, my reason is based on Shastra, on Shabda, on the Sruti. But no, here Kevala Yukti, Kevala Yukti, Jai logic means the Ruchi Rahita, the logic which is, which is devoid of the experience of Ruchi, actual Ruchi. Uh, that is called the Yukti, the uh, Kevala Yukti, and by Kevala Yukti, no one could understand Shastra. And if, if with permission, if just one minute, one more point. You know that in Praman Tattva, Praman Tattva is the first Tattva that you have to know. Amnaya Praha Tattva Mahim here. 
Pramantak is the first thing. So there are uh, there are three main categories of the, of the praman. There are ten pramans, but the come under the three main categories. That is pratyaksha, an anuman, and shabda. So pratyaksha means perception. An anuman means when you use your mind to understand, make some, draw some conclusions from the things that you have seen. And the last one is shabda. Now, if a person takes the meaning of shabda just to mean scripture, then this is not vidvat rudi. Because you read the scripture or you hear the scripture using patyaksh. And then you use your anuman to try to think, well, what does it mean? What does it mean? So then, how is it? This is a separate category. So Shabda actually means this. Shabda means this. This is all explained by Jiva Goswami in Thakwa Sandhara. It's a very initial foundation. Whatever Bhakti Stan Sutako has described is the mature and digestive, and digestive conceptions uh, from the writings of Srila Jiva Goswami. So the actual meaning of Shabda is this. There were ten people on a journey. And they got in a boat and crossed the river. When they got to the other side, the leader of the group told someone, Oh, count, just to make sure that we're all here. So then that person began to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Someone's missing. We've lost someone. I can only count nine persons. Are you sure? Yeah, you try. Then someone else said, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, there's only nine. What can we do? Uh-huh. And then one old person who was nearby saw this, he was, it was a very comical situation. And he came and he said to that person who was counting, Dasamas tam asi. Dasamas tam asi means you are the tenth person. Now, as soon as he heard that sound, he didn't see with his senses ten people. And he didn't figure it out by thinking. But Dasamas tam asi, you, as soon as he heard this, then there was a manifestation of the knowledge of the situation there and then. So that is the meaning of Shabda. Eh? This is the real meaning of Diksha. When the Karna Bait Sanskar takes place and the ear is pierced and the Shabda enters, which is non different from the actual object that it is describing. So in this way, I am giving my pranam to Srila Gurudev and praying that we can all try to enter deeply into his teaching in regard to what is the difference between Archan and actual Bhajan. Sila Gurudev Ki Jai. Let me ask a question. <coughs> Are you the M Sabha party this morning? Are you the Sabha party, the MC this morning? No, the Shringa is. Shringa. While we're waiting, can you just give a simple example of what somebody done to our shantras? Oh, I just want to say that everything that I've just told in my class is in Srila Gurdes books. Uh, but it's in some books which are not translated yet. And we are gradually translating them and they will come out very soon. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, so your question. In the very beginning you were saying the difference. So Sambandha, if you don't have Sambandha's darshan, mm -hmm. it is. So I was asking the question from, I guess, my mother. Um, an example of somebody darshan, the realization versus you gave several examples of what's not. Can you speak louder? Huh? Louder. <laughs> oh, louder. I'm sorry. You gave, you gave very many examples of what's not somebody darshan. So I just wanted to give any something so clarity, even with it for those who don't have it, probably including myself. What an example is. Of Sambandha Gyan. Darshan, in other words. Yes. <laughs> so here, the word Darshan, it comes from Drish Datu. So when the suffix Lut is added to Drish Darshan, the Drish Datu, then it forms the word Darshan. And this word Darshan, it means Avalokana, Sakshatkar, and Upalabdi. Avalokana means seeing. Sakshatkar means in direct experience and upalabdi means attainment or perception and so the sambandha to have knowledge of relation with Krishna means to have darshan of Sri Krishna's swarup you can see that Srila Vyasadev he went into trance bhakti yogena manasi samyak panhite malaya pasya purasam puram mayam chatara pasrayam and he saw Sri Krishna and he also saw Maya and he also saw the jivas 
So having the vision, actual darshan of these tattvas, that is sambandha jnana. Not only having the theoretical uh, knowledge of different compartments of, of, and categories uh, on the mental platform. Gurudev said, theoretical knowledge is no knowledge. So actual sambandha jnana is darshan, avidaya is darshan, and prayojana is darshan. Otherwise, a person is thinking, when they are in the platform of archan, they are thinking, oh, my sambandha jnana, I have, I understand this subject, but it's theoretical. And my abhidaya is bhajan, serving Radha Krishna. So that person who in their mind is trying to serve Radha Krishna, but they don't have darshan, they are shooting arrows in the darkness. Just like a person, they want to go hunting, so they go in the pitch darkness and they're just shooting and hoping the arrow will land somewhere. So that's not bhajan. So there's no abhidaya without darshan also. And then the prayojan is the, is the full darshan, the full gaudiya darshan, very profound. That means to f attain the bar of Raja Gopis, wherein they are seeing Krishna internally and outward all the time. That even when they're meeting with them internally, they're also experiencing separation. So the actual prayojan is very, very high. Srila Prabhupada says in the purport at 32525 that mm -hmm. by, Satam Prasangam He says that by theoretical knowledge or study, one's advancement will only be negligible. <laughs> he makes this the point. This is the so you have to have the association, as he was describing, that that sound with that form entering through your ear, going into your heart. Rip karna. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I am not the Sabapati, I am just your servant. So can someone take control of the situation and tell me what to do? <laughs> uh, delegate, delegate to someone this responsibility please, Nashinga, because you're busy. Asking questions. questions. The devotees are raising their hands and asking questions. No. Okay. The authorities have I'm spoken. Sorry, I never follow instructions very well. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't follow last yeah, night. Let's continue the tradition. Then Shamarani will decide what to do, please. No, there's no, there's no time built in the schedule for questions, but that's good that you have questions. It means you're paying attention. So then <laughs> note those questions. And you can email later, you can talk later. Prabhu is here until tomorrow morning also. Oh, after here we're going to Alachua for another festival. Yeah. So just please come to Alachua. <laughs> and then from there we're going to Eugene the next weekend for another festival. And then New York for another festival. And then North Carolina for another festival. So if you have questions, just come along. And we can have some questions for days and weeks. Oh, and this afternoon also. One more program this evening. Mm -hmm. Yes, everyone can come to North Carolina ask all their questions. <laughs> then come to Navadu. <laughs> You're next. Who's next?